everybody, it's Sam here from Mixed Up Craft. Thank you for watching my tutorial today. I'm going to show you how to make this really sweet Easter basket. It's kind of a double flip lid, so you can see the sides lift up here, and you've got lots of room to pop your gifts in. I'm going to have it kind of one side closed and then one side slightly open with the gifts kind of coming out. I'm going to make a personalised gift tag once I've decided who I'm giving this to. I do like to make Easter baskets, and I have an Easter playlist. I'll link it up here because I've got some other style baskets that you might like. But I just thought this one here with the handle and the double kind of opening there's acetate inside there as well you can just see so it's nice and strong I've reinforced the base so I can pop some weighty gifts in there as well and I just can't wait to fill it so let me show you how to make it so first of all to build the basket you're going to need a piece of seven and a quarter by ten and you want to score it one inch on all four sides okay so nice and easy we'll fold and burnish all that in a moment then for the front and back, you're going to want six pieces that are one by seven and seven eighths. They're just slightly shorter than the width of this basket. Okay, so that's six pieces. Then you'll want six pieces for the two sides. So again, they're the one inch and these ones are five and one eighth. So again, they're just slightly shorter than the five and a quarter width of this basket. And then you'll need 12 pieces that are one by five. And these are gonna be to weave around all of the four sides. And then for the hinges, you'll need four pieces that are two by five. And you just wanna score each one along the two inch side at one inch and you'll fold and burnish them and you'll see that we've got our hinges. So I'm just going to pop the scoreboard away, fold and burnish the base and then we can start popping this together. Okay, so first of all, I'm just going to snip down the short side here along both of the score lines and then just rotate and and snip down like so and then on each of those squares in the corner just take a little wedge off of the sides and then I'm going to use the Kalau glue for pretty much all of this it will take a little bit obviously slightly longer to dry ie a minute as opposed to seconds but um, it will add the strength that I want for this one. So I'm just going to pop some glue on one of the tabs and just bring around the side. And make sure you've got a really nice right angle on this. This is the tray and then we're going to start attaching the hinges to the side and then we're going to feed all of these pieces in and weave them. And then I think I may even add some acetate to back the, all of it to add some more strength and I'm also going to put another piece of stronger card on the bottom here as well because although Individually they're not heavy, but once I've got a few of the, the chocolates and stuff in here, there will be some weight. Then you're just going to pop some more glue on the next tab. And again, just move that around. And you've got the wiggle time. I could pull that one back out and stick it, you know, reposition it. But it will, when it does set, it sets solid, which is what you want when you're doing your, your 3D makes. And then I'm just going to fold that out, bring in those two tabs and I'll stick these down together. Okay, so that is the tray. Then with your hinges, you're going to stick them on each corner, like so. Okay, so I'm going to pop the glue on here. Now it's, it's a one inch, everything is one inch wide, so you can kind of roughly, you know, see what one inch is. I'm just going to cover that amount with glue, and then I'm just going to sit that. You can kind of spread the glue out. In fact, I'm going to pop a little bit more there. And just kind of spread it out a little and then make sure it really does hug the corner of that tray and then you can just go in there and make sure again you get it right up into the corner so you just want to do that on all four corners okay so you will have something like this it actually looks like a table <laughs> so if you want to make a paper table there we go Next you want to add these longer strips. So you'll have three for each side. So I've got my three here and they're gonna go inside like this. Now they won't go right to the very edge, 
because I wanted to make sure that you could fit them in here perfectly. So that's why this is eight inches wide, these were seven and seven eighths. As long as they're straight, now the easiest way I think is to stick the top one in first. Now it's up to you if you want it flush with the top or a little bit lower. I'm gonna have it flush with the top. Stick that one down first and then you just wanna position these two so that you have an equal space between all of them when they're laid down. See, something like, like that. Okay, so I'm just going to add some glue to the end here and here and then just lay that down. Again, make sure it's nice and flush with the top like so. And I'm going to repeat that on this side and also on these sides here, but make sure you're using the one by five and one eighth pieces not the one by five, which are all of these, because they are for the vertical strips. Okay, so now you should have something that looks like a crate, so if you would like to stick with this kind of style, then that's fine. What I would suggest if you want it a bit stronger is I would double up all of these so I'd stick another strip behind or I'd add the acetate in but I'm going to do that once I've added these. So these pieces are now to weave and I worked it out that I think you would have four, was it four or three? Yeah, four on the front and back and then two on the sides. Yeah, because that gives us the 12. So you want to go over the top one, under the second one and then just put your hand in, push that over, over this one and then back under. So the bottom will be tucked behind this. If you want it the other way, so you go under, over and then under and then you'll have it on the outside. It, I don't think it really matters too much. I'm going to do it the other way just so I've got everything concealed. So I'm going to go back under there and then what I'm going to do is I'm going to pop some glue down the bottom here. So it's attached on the bottom and on the top. So that will go in like so. And it will be, actually I'd cut those. So I'm just gonna trim three more of these and I'll again show you how you can get your spacing. So yeah, four, sorry, what did I say? Four and seven eighths is what I would do. It just means that they're definitely going to be hidden behind. As long as they're just slightly shorter than the five. So I'm just going to pop that one in there and then this one in here. In fact you do each one opposite really wouldn't you? So let's, you would have one if it's a proper weave. Under, over, under, that should be over. That's me, I'm not even doing it the right way. So that's going to be under, over, under, over. There we go. Right, so that one's going to be roughly there. I'm just going to place them just so you can see how you'll get your look like that. Okay, and when you see it obviously closer, you can really see the weave detail. So I'm happy with that one there. So then this one's going to go under, over, and then it's going to be on the outside. Yeah, that's right. So just spend a minute getting them equally spaced until you're happy like so and then I've already got the glue at that end so that one's fine so I'm just going to lift this end up and just pop some glue and just secure that in place so you just need to add a little bit of glue either end and I think that's plenty Okay, so if I just bring that up there, you can see the weave. And once we've added some ink to that, you'll really notice it more. So I'm going to now do the same on the opposite side and also on the sides here. Like I said, there have two strips and just weave them the same way.
Okay, so now we've got what looks like a storage box. It's like every time I add something, it makes me think of something else. Now I'm going to use the Distress Oxide Scattered Straw and it's just like a slightly darker, more rusty looking yellow. So I think it's going to work quite nice with this. And I'm just not going to use my ink pad. I'm literally going to brush it over and it will catch on all the areas and the lines and the different kind of way the ink catches just gives you that really kind of authentic distressed look. And if I bring that up now and you really get to notice all of the weave and you can obviously add as much as you want or as little or none at all you know this isn't for everybody I know not everybody likes doing this but I do want to just muck it up a little bit especially on the corners because that's where you would get most of the the wear and all along the bottom there as well like I said, you can use the brush, but I think you get a much nicer effect when you just add it directly from the pad. Okay, so I'm just going to continue doing this. And like I said, on the corners is where you'll get more wear. So that's where you want to kind of go in a bit deeper. And you could use your brown. The Vintage Photo Distressed Ink is a really nice colour. I might add a little bit of that just on the corners just to kind of help it stand out a little bit more. So I ended up going completely over the top with the brown and I might as well have used brown card. So if you look back at the one that I mentioned, um, it would have popped up in a playlist here. You'll see it using the craft card. So I just checked it. It's going to still look really nice once the bow's on and I've got all that, um, you know, faux stuffing and stuff coming out of it. Um, I think it's going to look good, but we have got the lid to do anyway and the acetate. So the acetate, you'll want two pieces if you do want to reinforce it that are just under five by just under eight and they're going to slot, I've put my red tape around it, they're going to slot in each side there. So you don't see it, you can just, well, when it catches the light there, but it is going to add that strength. And then I've got two pieces for the sides here, which are just over five by just under five. Okay, again, I've just done those measurements so it's easy for you to just slide it in because you've got lots of space to be able to stick it around the kind of panels there and it means that each one will fit in really neatly and it won't kind of bow the box. And then for the lid, stay in my hands there, <laughs> which, wow, I need to distress this anyway so it doesn't matter. This piece here is just over seven and a quarter. So it's in between seven and a quarter and seven and three eighths because this has got a wrap around the basket by just over 10. So again, it's the marker. It's not the one eight, 10 and one eighth. It's just that little notch just after the 10 inch. Okay. You then want to score it one inch on all four sides, like so. Okay. And then the easiest way to do this, pop it back along the long side and just pull it out from here ever so slightly. You just want to kind of have the same amount kind of over like gap here as you've got overhang there. I know that doesn't make a great deal of sense to you, but then you want to score at four and a half and five and a half. Okay. So just literally just pull it out a little bit. It's just because we've got that funny measurement because we're wrapping this around. But by doing that, it just means that you've got an equal amount either side because obviously it's a slightly different measurement. So just fold and burnish all the score lines. And then we need to do some cutting. So again, along the short side, you're going to cut up like so, and cut up here like so. And then you're just going to remove again the wedges from each side. Okay. And then this piece here in the middle, all these score lines, you just want to cut up each one, but you're not going to cut anything away because this bit we're going to stick in the box and then these are going to be our lids either side of the basket. So again, I'm just going to cut down like so and you're actually going to, these are going to fold this way so you can open up each side. So if I bring this in, so it's going to go over, it's going to stick inside, I think I'm going to have mine like that and then these will fold around each end 
to create our lid and then our handle is going to go through the middle there. So get your acetate all stuck down and then stick in all of these side tabs just like you did for the base tray. Just spread out that glue, just bring them around like so. So do these two and those two and then we'll stick that in. I'm going to get this all distressed again so if you have done anything like that you may be putting pattern paper on the top here. You might have some nice strawberry kind of print, anything like that. Um, but I'm going to just heavily distress this to make it all match and um, we're nearly done. We just need to then do the handle. Also a little trick just in case you're worried or maybe you stick both the ends down and then yours doesn't quite fit. Do the one end like I've done here, clip it onto the end of the basket so it's right in there and then bring this side around and glue these tabs in as it's on the basket and that way you know your lid's going to fit. So if I just pop a bit of glue there, again make sure that's all in there nicely and then just bring that tab around and I can bring down that side there and just hold that in place but can you see it fits perfectly you can see the side of it they're all coming together Okay, so I've distressed everything and I've just cut this piece here which is just over five by just under eight and that is going to just drop down in there. So now with the acetate and that it's become a really nice, you know, much stronger piece. Now it's up to you how you attach this. I'm actually going to attach it on the outside. I was originally going to attach it on the inside but the strap is exactly that size and that was going to go on the outside anyway so it, you know it doesn't matter so I would close it all up and then I'm going to actually use hot glue just again because it's the handle in fact I'm going to have to open that so I can get my hand inside so I need to make sure that this is right in the middle there we go Plus I've got the acetate, if I stuck it on the inside it would probably end up kind of peeling off. So again, now this one's all lined up. There we go, so that works really nicely. And then my handle. I'll just spread that glue out a little bit before it dries. I mean, those handles are going to be solid. This piece here is one by the length of my A4 cardstock, so it's 11 and 3 quarters. 11 would be fine, I don't need it to be that high. Okay, so now I just need to add the bow. So, have I got a preference to the front or the back? No, I don't think so. So, I, this bow here is from this ribbon, which I want to say I got from the pound shop last year but it may have been the works but I think it was the pound shop if anybody can remember if anybody has it I don't know whether to do it higher up no it should go there really shouldn't it so I'm just going to pop a blob of glue on there I always like to let it cool just a little bit and then you can kind of position it and obviously you can put a gift tag whatever it is you want on here trim that side a little bit. Oh, I think it's looking starting to look really cute. And then to make it look a little bit more authentic and I remember I had one of these last year this is the second one because I bought two. Again it's the same company I'm sure this was the was um, the pound shop. It says it actually comes from Australia um, by Maxi Save Limited 24 Bulworth Street Maitland um, so there you go, you might be able to still get it over there as well. I mean it's it's um, decorative craft grass but I remember the bits went everywhere. Get rid of that now. 
In fact, I'll probably use all of this inside this basket. I'm just going to break it all up a little bit. And then I can kind of let like the eggs and the gifts and stuff kind of all fall in, you know, amongst it. So let's kind of shove that in there. And again, this is all just going to strengthen it more. And Okay, so that's everything finished. I've just gone over the lid a bit more just to make it a bit darker, but I think it looks brilliant. I, the idea is, is that you'll have the sides kind of lifted with the gifts kind of peeking out or one side down and one side up. I'll probably do something like that. Actually, I think that looks quite good. By the time I've got a gift tag on there as well. Um, and yeah, can't wait to fill it all. So there you have it. So I hope you've enjoyed this Easter basket idea from me today. Can't wait to see your versions. I'm really pleased with how this has, you know, come together. It's nice and strong now and it's going to hold lots of gifts. So yeah, thank you for watching and I'll be back again very soon with another tutorial. Bye.